Lately, um, I've been focusing my videos on video games, and a lot of people have, um, are, it, it's, it's basically a well-known fact that a lot of people are using emulators to play games on systems that they were never originally designed to be played on. Now, the question here is, why would you want to do this? Well, among other things, um, number one, you might not have the money. Downloading the ROMs themselves are illegal. So, but if you don't have if you don't have the money, I can understand, you know, wanting to do that. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two is sitting right in front of you. This is the GP2X Wiz. The Wiz is one of two major devices that I'm aware of that are based on Linux and are open source gaming consoles. In fact, I have a video dedicated specifically to the GP2X. The GP2X Wiz is um, it um, is a basic media player and is capable of supporting um, old school games. And when I say old school, I mean anything under the Indian underneath the Nintendo 64, so we're talking Super Nintendo, Nintendo, PC Engine, uh, Sega Genesis, Sega Game Gear, stuff like that. So it'll support those. And the website um, that, has, that houses them um, well, actually they, they provide emulators. So this is one example. But from what I'm hearing, including uh, from my own friends and feedback I'm getting on the web from commenters on my videos, they've been saying that the GP2X Wiz is not a device that one should be lusting after for the most part. I mean, it's okay, but it doesn't really do everything. This does. This is the Pandora. The Open Pandora is a device similar in size to the Nintendo DS series. It's a gaming system slash UMPC. Now let's take a look at this. Digital downloads are the way of the future. Linux is the way of the future. Openness is the way of the future. And it is with the Pandora that I ask you this question. Look at this. Look at this console. It's, it's a beautiful console. And it can pretty much handle everything. It can even handle the 3D games. The processor on board is powerful enough to, ha to handle... Um, oh, shoot. What game does, was it that they... Was it Crisis or No, it wasn't... I don't know. Some, some really high-end 3D game. This is, that's one thing that the Pandora can do that the GP2X cannot. The device is also, as I said, it's also a UMPC. The Pandora is not out yet. It is going to be out soon. Uh, they're currently in the final prototype stages. But this device can handle anything. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it could handle N64 games if they'd be willing, if you could get them off the cartridge and onto an SD card and play them. And like I said, openness and whatnot, you know, that's the way of the future. Downloads are the way of the future. It's not that I'm against paying for games. I'm all for paying for games. In fact, I wish that there was something in the law that said that if you own the game, you can go ahead and copy it onto an SD card provided you won't reproduce it. Now, I know that there's really no way to do that without seriously tracking your movements, but, you know, but that's beside the point. Um, this device brings out the age-old question. Why do we need separate hardware for so many different games? Why can't we just have a single console? Now, here's the deal. Nowadays, a lot of people are into portable gaming. Now, seriously, portable consoles are nowhere near their desktop counterparts because um, they lack the hardware capacity to be that way. But, um, as we've seen with the PlayStation Portable, they can come very close. But why not just have a single console like this, like the Pandora, that can handle N64, NES, Super NES, PlayStation Portable, Xbox, and games like that while on the go, and on the and at the same time, you know, make them... What I'm saying is, why have separate consoles for separate games? For separate games? 
I noticed that s several titles are s released on multiple consoles. That's got to be a lot of work to develop a single game for multiple consoles. I'm thinking we do this. Digital download to a single console, and those that are developing the games, Sony and Nintendo, rather than developing their systems, they could just develop for this, for for something like this, like the Pandora. The Pandora is able to handle it. As you can see, we've got two control sticks, four fire buttons, and a control pad. And this is what the bulk of most modern desktop consoles have. It even, it even has a keyboard, and the Xbox is able to have a keyboard attached onto the controller. It's a little thumb keyboard. But this is a perfect example of what I'm thinking. Single super console for all, for all developers and why not see Mario? Why not see Tomb Raider? Why not see GTA on here legally? At this point, according to Nintendo, it is illegal to actually copy the ROMs and get them onto this particular platform. But I'm thinking if we develop for the platform in a legit, you know, way, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this takes off. Now, the only problem I have with the Pandora is the price. It's going to sell for $330. But if something like this takes off, um, will it put Nintendo and sony out of business in the hardware um what i'm thinking is we ditch the hardware and we focus on software for a single system okay so nintendo develops their mario games they develop them for the pandora you know that's what i'd like to see that's just my take on it i see open source is the future linux is the future digital downloads are the future i think the pandora is a perfect example of how we can combine all these into a single game system and at the same time have a umpc as well so uh, that's pretty much my take on it. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome. Insults against me will get you blocked. And have a nice day.